to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. I was really excited. <laughs> it was very low. Yeah. That was a little gristly. I am a, I'm I'm a you, man. That was like the first thing you said today. It was like the fresh out of bed, gristly. It's, it's football, football time. time. I just, uh, I'm warming up. I got a, uh, I got a set as a metal singer after the show, boys. Nice. So I nice. got to get it. I got to get the uh, the vocal fry. I mean, just added to the long list of gigs you've had over the years, right? I mean, yeah, which I, I'm performing. It's football time. Have you done? Oh, nice. Have you done any any metal before? Uh, not pure metal. I mean, okay. I've I have uh, like done covers. The metal wasn't part of your local no. fair tour. Nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, we've got a big show today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, quick. Here at the top, I wanted to uh, invite you to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Follow the show on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to it. It helps us out. We've got NFL news to talk about, injuries that have Jason shaking in his boots. We've got starts of the week, the fantasy forecast, one crown and two clowns. Today is <laughs> going to be a good one, and we're happy to have you with us. Um Email out uh, an email went out this morning, uh, inviting people to the new Ultimate Dashboard, which is a brand new in-season tool we have built into the JoinTheFoot.com membership. You can check that out. You get an extra episode of the show every week. You get access to the dashboard, which which lets you import your team, get an optimized lineup. It's very helpful if you manage multiple teams. And uh, I took a poll yesterday over on X about how many teams you have, one to three, four to six, seven to nine, ten or more. What do you think the results Well, I'm were? hoping that the ten or more is very small. It's only 6.8% okay, of uh, nearly divorced people. <laughs> yes. And then seven to nine was only 8%. And then the other 80% were between one and six. So we had the win the winner was one right. and three, but 33% of you are, are managing four to six teams. It's helpful if you manage more than one to use the dashboard. You can check that out at jointhefoot.com. Uh, I want to jump right into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Devon A. Chan <laughs> remains a game-time decision. It, se it seems like he is going to play. Yeah, he um, does. he's been at Which practices. Is the worst limited. Case scenario. Yeah, I know. He, he's been limited at practices. The reports we're getting from, I look, I'm not saying the name of anyone because this is not a personal distrust. But the reports that are coming out, they're showing a picture, uh, like a video of him stretching or walking and saying he looks great today. It's like cut, like. They're like, yeah, he's cutting, and he's well. Show us the video of that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm a little worried. Last year there were, uh, you know, there were a handful of games where he was on the injury report and limited through practice, and they did not have heavy involvement of him those weeks. So everything that the head coach has said all off season is that that room, that running back room, there is trust from one to four. But at the same time. I, I think in, in truth, I don't I don't think you can bench him. I, most people don't have a good enough option to have the chance of, you know, a 25-point great game sitting there on their bench. So if he's inactive, a la Christian McCaffrey from Monday Night Football, if we get the inactive, he's supposed to go through a pregame workout, it's a game-time decision is the official designation. He's optimistic. If he's not there, the question in everybody's mind is, can you just play Jeff Wilson? Can you just play Jalen Wright? If if there's no A-chan, no most, are, are both players in your lineup no matter what? Yes. I think I think if if both of them are gone, and obviously Moster is already ruled out, he's not going to the IR, but he will not be there today. If if A-chan is not there, then I will, I will be starting both of the other guys. Do you agree with that, Mike? I do. 
All right, so we'll pay attention tonight. We've got the Dolphins and Bills. We previewed it on yesterday's episode. What if, just for Jason, what if it, like your backup option was Alexander Madison of the Raiders in what projects to be pretty negative game script which against is, the Baltimore Ravens? Which is positive for Alexander yes, Madison. Yes, yes, yes. Um, no, I, I wouldn't go that far. Okay, um, I'll I, tell my friend. <laughs> I, I do think, um, you know, it's, it's tough because – there's a player like Jordan Mason. Uh, that would be a great play where oh, I'd be willing, but yes. you can't take that risk because you've got to you've got to know today. And you, for all we know, Christian You're McCaffrey. With McCaffrey? Could, yeah. yeah, maybe Ramondre. That would be a player we'll talk about him a lot today. Wait, you're saying you would not take the risk on on? He's saying waiting on Mason because because Christian McCaffrey came out yesterday and said like th if you saw the quotes because they as soon as it hit they were they went crazy of I'm mentally. I, I am preparing to play the game. Like, and then you went on, and this was the the clip. This was the sound bite. But you're saying this is in relation to Achan? Yeah, well, yeah. Of, I'm of saying if, if if you were looking at who you're going to start, Achan or someone like Jordan Mason. If I knew both, you know, if, if I knew, I don't need to know about Mason. He's he's starting in that situation for me. But my, I don't care about the McCaffrey thing or the Achan. Like today, I would. If it's a game time decision for Achan with the risk of, of limited work, I'll just play Mason. But what if you don't have a pivot? Should Christian McCaffrey be? Don't active? care if he's active. You're oh, saying even okay. if if wow. CMC is active, you would rather play a backup Jordan Mason over a, yes. a, over an active Achan? I would. Okay, I, I would not. Yeah, I mean, I think Mason. The utilization is going to be. They're not putting Christian McCaffrey in and giving him all the work in this game. And the 49ers are going to win the ball game. They're probably going to get a lead. Jordan Mason, you know, we talked about this. You, people like J.K. Dobbins, he had, what, 10 carries? People like Tank Bigsby. Like, Mason's got 10 carries in the bag, no matter what. That's that's some confidence. And I, I don't want – last year, people played A-chan off of a game-time decision – and he walked off the field into the locker room. It, it does worry me tremendously. Yeah, I mean, right now I've got Devon Achan as my running back 19. Um, again, it, in most leagues, that's still going to be someone you start by the time you go through running back one, running back two, and your flex. Um, but if you've got... Both of you guys would play him over or waiting on, or as you call no, him, waiting I on Mason? I'd go Mason. I I think McCaffrey's not playing. I would I would go Achan to take the risk of CMC playing out. Uh, Puka Nakua, it's been reported uh, by head coach Sean McVay that he can miss more than four games uh, while on IR. This seems inevitable. Um, everything that I've seen has been six games with with three more games of potential limitations or, or lack of production or reduced production is a better way to put it when you recover from a, this kind of an injury. Yeah, I mean, uh, six weeks is everything that I've been seeing as the kind of standard for this as well. They do have a week six bye, so they, he misses four games. That's guaranteed. After that fourth missed game is their bye week, and then we'll see if he returns after their bye or if he needs more time. All right, uh, Jordan Love. Matt LaFleur left the door open for him to still play on Sunday, but he's got to be cleared. I, I would be, I'd be shocked. However, the line, whether it's this news or, you know, my confidence in the Packers, mm -hmm. the line has moved to minus two and a half now. They, the, the coach saying the starter for the Green Bay Packers might still play has it like the weight versus Andy Holloway's right. almost upsets. I mean, it's probably, Andy. It's, it's pretty balanced. Yeah. Oh, you go, you side on that. I Andy's think it's thing. probably Andy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, remember when he said it, he, he knew. Well, normally lines move when there's heavy betting action on the other side of it. Right. We know what happened yesterday. Yeah. We know how many <laughs> psychopaths bank accounts are in <laughs> my hands right now. Uh, T. Higgins, hamstring, didn't practice. Ken Walker, oblique, didn't practice. That's a I hate that one. That's a bad one. Um, Jake Ferguson didn't practice. Dalton Schultz didn't practice. Keenan Allen, Roma Dunes, they did not practice. When, Wednesday when, practices are very often missed if you're a little banged up or if you're a veteran, whatever. I don't worry too much about the Wednesday practices. Kenneth Walker is the one to watch for the most because it's the most impactful. you got to pay attention. If he misses practice tomorrow, then you start getting worried and and, and or I, you know excited if you got Charbonnet. I agree, and, I, and Keenan Allen is one to watch. He's Sunday night. And he left. You know, he was going into the game with a heel problem. He he, uh, like obviously re-aggravated something. So he is 
if you're counting on Keenan Allen, you better have a pivot. And I would presume Rome is not going to play. It, it, I it see. just it seems that way when you go for an MRI and then it's diagnosed with an MCL and, and you you miss practice. I'd be why put him out there, uh, you know, this week. But TBD. The Broncos placed running back Audric Estime on injured reserve. He'll miss at least four games with an ankle injury. You skipped the most important one for our bet. Okay. What What are you talking uh, about? The Denver wide receivers, uh, Vele and Reynolds, missed practice, oh. which means which means there is a chance that no. either Marvin Mims or Troy Franklin <laughs> can play on the field. Nah, man. I'm going to nah. go back to Estime here. Uh <laughs> Jaleel McLaughlin and Javante Williams, like a consolidation of opportunities in the Denver backfield is what you're looking for. And it, look, it was fully consolidated this past game. Estime only had, I think, two touches. One was a big run. Um, I can't remember which, and he fumbled. I don't remember which <laughs> touch the, he the was fumble in, was he, on. That, that was the problem. He came in early. They seemed like he was part of the rotation. And then fumbled. And then he fumbled. So this is more of a, to me, like I've – We'll see if Javante is... Which would you play? Which of those two would you play? I would still play Javante. I, I would as well. Uh, and, but the, the point being of the fear that, like the rumblings of fear that could start building up if Javante goes out the next two games and still looks awful, that estimate, like the coaching staff might make a switch over to him, that's not happening. Due to him being on injured Correct. reserve. Yeah. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usa.com slash insurance. Starts of the week. All right, it's time to throw out our starts of the week before we jump into the forecast. This week at quarterback, I'm going with tonight's game. I'm going with Tua Tungavailoa against Buffalo. Woo. I think the, uh, the you You're know. You're talking we, on Superman's cape over here. We had a slow start to the year, but uh, you saw Arizona put up 28 against them last week. Uh, this game has the second highest total of the week, which I love. Waddle was uh, back in the game, electric, Tyreek Hill and company. And the need, a lot of this comes down to the fact that we have question marks at running back as well. Might have a more pass-heavy offensive plan, and this was a game he could already perform in. He averaged 73% completion percentage at home last year and 273 passing yards and two touchdowns. If you get anything near that, you're very happy, and he could go way above it. I'm going with Tua. I am going to go with uh, another player who disappointed last week. I hope he does better for you than he did for me. He should do better. I'm going to go with Jared Goff, go back to the Dominator. Um, one game does not, you know, the last couple seasons make, and that game against the Rams was a – just a brutally hardcore um, slugfest. And so this game is still at home again. It's a 50-point over-under again against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who do not, I believe, have as strong a defense. And more importantly, they don't have as strong a secondary. Uh, last year, they gave up the fifth most passing yards. And we saw these two teams in the divisional round last year. Jared Goff threw it 43 times, had 287 and two touchdowns. So it's a little bit more difficult to run than pass against Tampa Bay. I expect Jared Goff to have a, a really strong fantasy week at home. I'm gonna. Oh, you got something, Andy? I just was curious. Would you play Jared Goff at home against Tampa, or would you play Jaden Daniels against the Giants? Oh, Asking man. for a friend. Oh man, that is really, really close. I I like both of those plays. If I had to go with one, I I've got them back to back. I'm gonna go, go with my rankings, which is Jaden Daniels. By I would one. play Daniels. Uh, I'm going with my stream of the week. It's it's Stafford against Arizona same arguments the Arizona Cardinals defense is very bad uh Josh Allen the number one quarterback on the week last week who completed five total passes in the first half that did not stop him from going on to having 232 passing yards and two passing touchdowns the Rams have the number so, since McVay has taken over the Rams dominate the Arizona Cardinals and since becoming a Ram Stafford averages 250 plus and two passing touchdowns all right, my running back start of the week is going to maybe surprise you. Beep, beep. I'm going with the Gus bus against Carolina. I don't hate it. Uh, we had J.K. Dobbins stealing the headlines with the big runs. It was really three big runs and then uh, pretty pedestrian efficiency. I think Gus is going to get – I don't think anything's changing in the workload uh, for the second week of the year, and you're playing against uh, Carolina this week. 
positive game script is in the cards. You can start both Chargers running backs with confidence in this game. They gave up 180 total rushing yards last week and two scores. That is the uh, – that's not good. That's not good, <laughs> Carolina. And now you've lost your all-pro defensive tackle. So high T, Greg Roman, trusting the Gus. Um, I'm playing the Gus bus this week. I, I, I like the play a lot. When I was uh, putting a lineup together on, on DK, it was like I, I kept going back and forth. Like, would I rather have Dobbins or rather have Gus? And in this one – you would expect a couple of rushing touchdowns against Carolina. And so rushing touchdowns are, are I think, at the end of the year, there'll be more for Gus than J.K. Both are good. My running back start of the week is Ramondre Stevenson, who is coming off an excellent week one. He looks good. 25 carries against Cincinnati for 120 rushing yards and a touchdown, plus three receptions. Now he's at home against Seattle. Um, if you look at his utilization, he touched the ball on 44% of their offensive plays. Only Bijan had a higher rate how, of how did that work out for him? It worked out pretty great in the They set. won the ball game. They won the ball game. He was breaking tackles like crazy. And look, Seattle's not a great defense. Last year, at least, Seattle ranked thirty first in rushing yards allowed. So I I think Ramondre is a really, really strong play. Like if I had a flex option of Ramondre versus A Chan with the questionable status, gotcha. I'd be willing to put Ramondre in. Uh, my running back, it's Jordan Mason of the 49ers against the Minnesota Vikings. Like We we all saw what happened last week, and it's just uh, – maybe it's people being hopeful for Christian McCaffrey, but the consensus rankings I'm seeing on Mason are way too low. Like This guy is a – he I'm, I'm forcing him into my lineup as essentially a top 12 play if I have him. Uh, they're, look, they're five-and-a-half-point road favorites. I expect Jordan Mason to see all the work yet again. Yeah, I mean, it's not like there weren't committee backs last week that had great success. Uh, that's what I'm going to look at Mason like myself this week. You know, even if McCaffrey plays, you're even saying, if McCaffrey yeah. plays, the the fact that he's dealing with an injury that is a pain tolerance is a a, a long term injury at this point. It's over five weeks, uh, and you're a team with Super Bowl aspirations. The level of insanity to give him a full workload in this game if he's back. Yep. I don't believe that the 49ers will do that. My start of the week at wide receiver, I really wanted to come here and tell you that it was Marvin Harrison because I felt like the world needs to hear yes, we do. that Marvin Harrison's going to be okay. Yes, we do. And that you didn't draft him to bench him for Jamison Williams and you didn't draft him to bench him for Rashid Shaheed. And I mostly believe those statements, but not to the degree of start of the week. I watched the film. Jason watched the film. There it, was, it was not good. There, It just plain wasn't good. He came out this morning. He's like, <laughs> he basically said, yeah, it wasn't great. I was like, yeah, no, it wasn't great, Bob. <laughs> wasn't great. My start of the week is a, another rookie, Malik Neighbors, against the Washington Commanders. Um, they're going to throw him the football. He's going to go nuclear this, this week. This is going to be an amazing week. In fact, if you have any shot of trading for Malik Neighbors, it's going to be right here, right now, before this week happens. And I mean, I would trade a lot of players that – I mean, like Chris Olave or Malik Neighbors, I'm probably doing that deal. Let me, uh, so, you know, Jason's face says – you're. That's, that, I mean, that, that, think is about calling it for a your, that is calling your shot, um, and I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, I don't think I could pull the trigger on that, but I, I get it. Uh, here's the hand, real question. Hand me the the weapon. I'll pull it. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's a real question. You drafted Marv. I didn't want Would this to come up. Would you trade Marvin Harrison for Malik after week one? Throw, throw draft capital away. That doesn't matter yeah. anymore. In redraft. No. Huh? He plays. I, I'm in full agreement. He plays Washington. Look. Like, we're going to be attacking the Washington secondary all year, and it's gonna be glorious. Like, I'm I'm not saying do it, but Daniel Jones is gonna have a good game. Oh yeah, yeah. oh Daniel yeah, Jones, yeah. he will have a good game against Washington. But then it's just to to speak to the long term for Malik, it's Cleveland, and then it's Dallas are the next two. Weeks I wouldn't after do it. That. I wouldn't do it. But I I want to give some perspective here. Like, week one rookies at wide receiver, they don't do a lot. Now one for four for Marvin Harrison is a disaster. But Malik Willis, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Malik Neighbors put up five for 66. You're like, okay, that was the 10th 
best performance for a rookie wide receiver in game one in the last decade. So it's not like it's it's some what? terrible wow. end-of-the-world performance. It was good. Five for 66 is good, especially with what Daniel Jones put up negative four points. Like, <laughs> you're playing a much worse secondary. Uh, Washington is the matchup for wide receivers. Malik, neighbors, all the way. Uh, I am going with my start of the week. This is really funny because it's like a, a – You're going to go with your start of the week it, as your start of the week? Yeah. it's cool. it's, it's a Marvin Harrison barometer. Because I do think you could still start Marvin Harrison, but I was trying to look for who would I have possibly that I would say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go this guy over Marv. For me, that's Chris Godwin um, in Detroit. Talked about the 50 point over under. Uh, they can throw on. You know the, the the Lions allowed the the most explosive pass plays in the NFL last year. Week one, we were promised how he was gonna go in the slot. He did go in the slot. He was eight for 89 and a touchdown. Everything seems like he's slotting in to be a weekly wide receiver too. And for my next two starts, uh, as I get to them, these are just confidence boosters. It's DJ Moore against the Houston Texans. Week one was awful, but this is also, look at the situation. Keenan Allen is banged up. Roma Dunze is banged up. Like This could be a full consolidation of targets for DJ Moore. The, you get, Hey, you get the island game. That's fun. It's in the dome. Uh, it, the over-under has recently moved up. We like to see that. And DJ Moore, we think that he can exploit some one-on-one -on -one man coverage opportunities in, in this game. It's long-term for DJ Moore. We will see. But this week with the other two guys already a little bit hurt, I think that Moore's a strong play. Love this play. Do you uh, – I'm, I'm going to ask you this, Mike, as I get to my tight end start of the week. Are you putting any underpants on this week? I am – well – Can I borrow them? Oh, yeah, brother. I don't, I don't need titanium. What levels do we got here? We got we got steel. That's your starter set. <laughs> We got we got titanium. You need a little extra protection okay, okay, for the undercarriage. Okay. And when you need to go invincible from the crotch kicks, you put on the unobtainium. Uh, I, I, was, I don't I don't recommend going no, there on your first no, ride. No, that's I, for seasoned veterans only. Can I? You got you got to be callous. Can I get the steel, please? <laughs> you got it. Steel underpants. I'm gonna go with Colby Jack. That's Colby. Yeah, baby. John Parkinson. <laughs> Tight end for, Jack Cheese. <laughs> for the uh, Rams. Um, Mike, you... I'll do it. I'm in on this play. There, There's going to be I don't a, know if that's good for you or not. There's going to be a game plan change with no Puka Nakua. Yeah. Colby Parkinson last week, it, it looked pretty good. He, played the mo he had the most routes run among all tight ends in the NFL. We care about routes run at tight end. He was the tight end seven on the week, four for 47. If that's the worst you get, cool. That's yeah, great. That, I'll take that. That was the tight end seven. And uh, there's a chance he's the – like we, we want to say Tyler Johnson or, or maybe Jordan Whittington shows up and then Demarcus Robinson is obviously going to be out there. But maybe, just maybe, a lot of Cooper Cup, a lot of Colby Parkinson, a lot of steel underpants. I think um, <laughs> I think it's worth it. All right, my start of the week at tight end. And look, I'm, I really like this start. I, I'm, 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 I'm pretty confident, okay. I, even, even bullish, and this will be surprising. Um, but it's Pat Fryermuth. I think the Muth will be Luth in Denver. This did surprise me. <clears throat> Denver allowed the most fantasy points to opposing tight ends last year. This is like where you beat them. They also have Patrick Sertan, and right now the Steelers have one wide receiver. You know, I know where Sertan's going to be on that field, and it's going to be, you yeah. know, it's going to be riding Pickett. Um, and so Pickens, Pickens yes, uh, Kenny Pickett, no longer no, on the team. No, uh, George Pickens will have to deal with Sertan. And Denver is beatable at tight end. Their next best weapon for the Steelers is the Muth. He had four targets in week one. They didn't throw the, a, a ton, but that was 18% target share. So I, I do think, and we also saw last year Fields play against this Denver defense do very, very well. We've also seen Fields throw some touchdowns to Cole Komet. So I, I think for one of those later starts, you had an injury, you didn't get likely on waivers. The Muth is a guy uh, that I'm willing to start. Mike, close us out. Mine is, this is a full confidence push. It's Mark Andrews. And the reason that Mark Andrews is here is because I am seeing him ranked under Kyle Pitts, Dalton Kincaid, George Kittle. I'm not there yet. He had he ran the second most routes of the position last week. He just ran we're, him into triple coverage. Yeah, we're, we're all excited for Isaiah Likely. That doesn't mean Mark Andrews is toast. The Ravens are eight and a half point home favorites, 25 point implied team total. Last year, the Raiders 
Uh, they gave up the sixth highest opponent tight end target share. I think that Mark Andrews gets back to being a top tier option. All right, those were our starts of the week. Let's take a break. Come back with the forecast. I got to be honest with you, Mike. What do you got? These underpants are pretty uncomfortable. I <laughs> they mean, are made of steel. Yeah, they, they are no give. No. And I need <laughs> give. All right, here we go. It's time for Fantasy Forecast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. The New Orleans Saints at 1-0. After that whooping, they put on David Tepper. Um, take on the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. This is not going to be like that one. <laughs> the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus 6. The over-under is 47. And My the uh, – look, I – I'd take Dallas in the points. Yeah. Minus the points. Uh, I really so, would. so our our uh, listener league that we drafted that I've talked about, that was the hospital draft team um, that went awry. My team when you name, say hospital draft, I'm imagining all your players are injured. Yeah. Well that's like you that, took no, that's my league of records. You took players that are injured <laughs> no, already. I was at the hospital. Um I have named my team the Saints <laughs> because I have all of them. I've got Kamara, I've got Alave, I've got Taysom, I've got Carr. And so that was fine week one. I got, I got the W because I played Carolina. And I'm looking at this, and I'm like, oh, no. Dallas, this is not going to work well for my team. You know, so far the Dallas defense has looked great. They didn't have to throw the ball a lot, so people were disappointed with Dak and C.D. Lamb. And, you know, we had the injury to Jake Ferguson. But things are trending in a positive way for Ferguson to maybe be out there. I don't think I'd play him. You would just make the pivot. There's other yeah. options. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. You go Colby Jack. I think I would. I would yeah. rather play Colby Jack or Fryermuth. Both both of those starts over a, a banged up Ferguson. So Dak is in there. CD is in there. Brandon Cooks to me. I was very encouraged yeah. by the Week One opportunities. He had seven targets in a game where they passed for half the game. So Brandon Cooks to me is a flex play. Do you guys agree with that? I do. And then Zeke and Rico Dowdle. If you're taking the shot, heavy favorites in the game. Right now, I'm just playing Zeke. That's, yes, I, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. Uh, Zeke was at 51% of the snaps, 12 opportunities. Dowdle was at 44% of the snaps, 10 opportunities. So while it it's close, but it's still Zeke, and the goal line opportunities went to Zeke. And the the first half of the game was not quite that close, and then there was, you know, it was like a blowout uh, later in the game, and, and Rico got more involved. I, I think Zeke is an okay play here, but the, the New Orleans Saints defense is still good. So I'm I'm guessing that uh, it's not going to be easy sledding for the rushing and that Dak throws two touchdowns. Yeah, here. I think CeeDee Lamb's going to have a fantastic game. Look, his his yardage is sitting at 86 and a half right now. Is over under. I think it's going to be okay. On the other side for the Saints, though, the we've already seen the change in the offense. So I Jay, just for you, I think there is some optimism, or I at least have some that this was not the same old curmudgeonly. They like they're using motion. Yes, hey, that was look, nice to see. They cubes, look, baby cubes. They went into the future of the NFL. They didn't go into the 1950s style. So, uh, Kamara is in. I'm st Olave is still in. I'm gonna. I, he better That's get some so targets. Scary, man. He better get some targets. Uh, the other guys though, he, Shahid, the deep play. Don't love it. Well, let's look at this game. Would you rather play Shahid or Brandon Cooks? I'd go Brandon Cooks. I would as well. Yeah, the defense is just – I'm scared of the Saints going on the road, and, and Rashid Shahid is – he is he could make us look dumb in one play. That's what he does. Yes. He he catches – here's what I know. Derek Carr will take one to three shots downfield at Rashid Shahid in this game. Mm -hmm. If one of them works out, we're dumb. That's how, that's how it works. And now, if – Shahid outperforms Olave for a second consecutive week. Dude, that's going to be bad. That's going to be – are we going to have to reimagine Olave compared to where this draft cost was? Because, you know, if you talk about a player that let people down in week one and, and was a head scratcher, putting up 47 points and having Chris, Chris Olave do nothing – that was as disappointing as anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say that, you know, they didn't need him when it was 40 to nothing at the half or something like that. So Olave was not needed. It's really about target pecking order here. If Shahid happens to outscore Olave, but, you know, Olave's got 
seven or eight targets and, okay. and Shahid has four or five, uh, fine, whatever. Um, it's really like I need six plus targets for Olave this week. And I'm, I'm still playing Olave. Uh, one week does not a season make, but definitely holding my breath. Juwan Johnson or Taysom Hill, who would you start as an emergency tight end? Because I, I've been I thinking think about this one. I think it's still Taysom. Okay. Tampa Bay at 1-0. Take on the Detroit Lions in Detroit, who are also 1-0. Both teams uh, won, and Tampa won big. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus 7.5. The over-under is 51 beautiful points. Yeah, we like that. Uh, we had a – this is a rematch from the divisional round. Detroit had – Knocked off uh, Tampa 31-23 last year. It was tied going into the fourth. I do think this game is going to be pretty competitive. I, I I don't think that what we saw from Tampa last year or what we saw already through one week is a mirage. I think that they know what they want to do on offense, and they have the personnel to where there's a level of consistency and reliability here. I think adding Bucky Irving and, and Jalen McMillan has – like obviously very small sample and it was against a terrible defense. Um, but it, that they look like legit helpful players on the NFL field. And there really was nothing, uh, last year be, behind, you know, you had, you had Rashad white doing his work at the passing game, Mike Evans being awesome. And then Godwin serviceable, but they needed more places to go to. And I, I really do think Irving and McMillan, um, help Baker and help help the whole team uh, be able to compete in a game like this. What did you think about, I mean, week one, Dave Canales did not fix Bryce Young, and week one, the Buccaneers' offense without Dave Canales was hot magma. They're using Christian uh, Chris Godwin the right way through one game, putting him back into a position to succeed. You know, early, early times. It's not. It's not just early. It was also Washington, which – it's, it's such a difficult thing to evaluate because you can't – I'm not going to knock the Buccaneers for beating the crap out of Washington because they should. But on the other – they still did it. Like, they, they didn't just – they didn't just win. They throttled them on the offensive side of the football. So, But this is a much more fair competition for the Bucs, so I'm not – my chips aren't all in on the Bucs. That's why they were on the hungry for more. I want to find out, is this – are they actually going to be this good again? And I think there's a great defense to find it out against because yeah. Detroit has a good defense, but they're not like all world. I'm not, they're not one of those teams I'm afraid to play. This is just like show what you got. And so I, I, I'm really looking forward to this matchup. I, I am as well. It puts Baker Mayfield into streaming quarterback category. Oh yes, for sure. Yes. And Rashad White, his his rushing line is 46 and a half. That's not. Wildly impressive, and I don't even know if I'd take the over I, on it. I don't know. I'd that. probably take the under, but six targets last week, six receptions last week. Yeah, beautiful. Ho hum, he catches everything thrown his way, and seventy-five receiving yards. Beautiful. It was like the Achan game. It was, you know, Achan put it up in the passing game. Rashad White is going to be in your lineup. Both running backs on Detroit side are going to be in your lineup, and we just hope that we have enough work there. Jamison and, Williams is the only question. Of is are you? He's in my lineup. Over over who though? Uh, Marv. <laughs> no, no, I don't think oh, I'm doing man. that. Uh, he is. He, I would I would play him over Marvin in in. I think that there's going to be a big pendulum swing, and we'll talk about it in that matchup. Yep. I think. I'd would you play him over George Pickens, who will have the no the Sertan? I don't think so, man. Pickens is. Pickens is good. He looked so good week one, but he didn't do a ton for fantasy. But he he, he did had look big really plays, good. right? I yeah. mean, he McLaurin. Yeah, sure, that one's fine. Okay, at home against Tampa. Um, the nice thing about this game is both teams have very very strong run defenses, and so you kind of have a passing funnel on both sides. I expect the ball to be thrown a ton. Gibbs, I love Gibbs. I'm I'm a little bit more worried about David Montgomery. Like he's okay. pushed down into more like a flex option range for me because he's not involved in the passing game. Very difficult to run on Tampa Bay. Where where was David Montgomery? I mean, I like it ended up incredible, you know, almost sixteen points. But it's like before the overtime drive. Before the overtime I think he would he, he would have been it was like eight fantasy points. Yeah, it would have just been eh. So yeah. that like before we if you have Montgomery, yeah, there's optimism, but it is I wouldn't look at week one as fully prescriptive for his season what are the other question marks in this game I, mean, I think we covered everything I think we got it all 
I, I, I do. I think we did. And we'll be want, you know, Irving and McMillan and, um, you know, what does Amon Ra do to bounce back? Those will be storylines that we're paying attention to, but this is one of my favorite games of the week. I cannot wait to watch this ball game. And, uh, I don't know which side would you be on with the seven and a half point line? I, I lean Tampa keeping it closer. I think it'll be a closer game as well. Yeah. The, uh, we, we give a tip of make sure every Sunday morning, if you have that empty spot, like one of your guys got ruled out, you can move on to the IR. You should always be stashing backup running backs who have the potential to be league-changing guys. If Bucky Irving wasn't picked up, which there's a chance he was, Bucky Irving is one of those players to me of, I'm going to stash him if I if I ever have an open spot. Because if, if Rashad White oh, man. loses time to injury, Bucky Irving, was gonna, those six for six, 75 receiving yards, that will go right to that, Bucky Irving. The fact when you have a running back backup that you know can catch the football, yeah, mm -hmm. that is so fundamentally different than saying, okay, if Javante goes down, it's Estimim and and Jaleel just sharing time. Like, I don't think I think Bucky would get everything, and that yep. would be very valuable. They don't. They really don't have people behind them with what was it Chase it, Edmonds and well, um, Edmonds is on IR. Tucker. Oh, Tucker. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Tucker. So I, I think that's a really important name to mention. The Colts, I don't even know why we're talking about this game. I already told you what's going to happen. The Colts <laughs> at 0-1 travel to Green Bay to take on the Packers, who are also 0-1. Games in Lambeau, DraftKings Sportsbook line, unsurprisingly, has moved to Indianapolis minus 2.5. The over-under is 41. Uh, what was my total? 24-14? Uh, so 23-13. 23-13, 36 points, over-under 41. Okay. I mean, we're we're working on it. Okay, um, so under. Got yeah, it. I would take the under, obviously. Uh, uh, the three of us yesterday, we we sat down and we watched. Maybe twenty three sixteen. Maybe we're getting to sixteen. Oh, because okay, getting yeah. to forty one. Okay. Thank you, knew. <laughs> but we. I couldn't tell if one of the kicks went in. Yeah, we. The, uh, the, yeah, the, the, look, the text was a little fuzzy. You know, there's angles that you can't tell if you're watching <laughs> the kick from the side, right. which is how I do my. Wait a minute. I thought this was a magazine. This, yeah, you, you had, had the to almanac. The Didn't you say no. you had the almanac? The almanacs were the scores printed, guys. I saw the game through an orb. Oh, okay. All right. Well, you guys don't know any. Orb? You know yeah. nothing share, about predicting share games. Share the orb, bro. <laughs> no. Uh, Release uh, the orb. So we, we sat down and we watched Anthony Richardson. Um, we watched every one of his passing plays, all 19 of them from last <laughs> week. And I, I think, I, I don't want to overstate it at all but all three of us walked away saying he had a pretty darn good game he was he was better than we thought when it came to um just the the passing work and the and the accuracy yeah he had he had a a play that made us all just burst out laughing we couldn't tell who he was targeting i think it was he was trying to throw the ball through two people i um, think he looked good but nine for 19 won't get it done and if the alec pierce play doesn't happen your back foot chucking it as far as you can, that's a bad game. Yeah. And you're at home in week one. So I think tough environment, me personally. Look, I'm not saying don't start Anthony Richardson. He's your starter. He's your starter. But I think, you know, Green Bay is going to give him a hard time. Green Bay is a smart, well-coached football team that will know how to game plan against this uh, Indianapolis offense. Uh, but you're starting your studs here. Richardson, Taylor, Yes. the target share for Pittman means you keep him in your lineup, and you're done talking about the Colts at that point. So I'll go. I'll throw this to Jason because, because Andy already saw at least a different, a, a possible outcome. But so, Jason, we're more on Jonathan Taylor this week of thinking he's going to have a strong game. His DK line's at 79.5. Do you have that level of confidence? That that is a really really good line. I don't have a uh, I don't have the confidence necessarily to take that line and, and go better. No, but not, I have I'm, full confidence in I'm Jonathan Taylor play, being like, a good Do you play. think he's going to follow through with that type of a performance? Yeah, I mean, look, they I I I think they win this game um, against Malik Willis. I think Malik Willis will make a couple of boneheaded plays or not be able to move the offense. So short fields, uh, you know, two rushing touchdowns for Jonathan Taylor to me are okay. totally in the cards in this game. Not if they only score 13. Right. That's true. Right. You know well, what I mean? The, the well, you really, can miss an extra point. I guess. The analysis is very difficult for me knowing What's, what I have the constraints to work in based on your future uh My analysis is based on, you know, the future 
obvious thing that's going to happen. Okay, so you have a negative game script then for the the Colts. Yeah. Are you playing Pittman? 42% of the targets. Not a huge no, pie, I, but... No, to me, it's you play Richardson, Taylor, and Pittman, and you move on. Okay. Uh, on the other side, everyone's going to be shaky with the starts of any wide receiver or tight end on the Packers, which, look, let's just make it easy. Jaden Reed wasn't drafted so highly that you don't have another option. If you are uncomfortable, just move to somebody else for a week. Jacobs, you play him. The game plan should be to hand him the football. It better be. He had 19 opportunities in week one. Barring a hyper-negative game script, which I don't see at home in, in Lambeau, but is possible, I think 25 opportunities for Jacobs is in the cards. Oh, yeah. I, I that He's going to be the centerpiece of their offense. He's a must-start. And, yeah, Jaden Reed, Christian Watson, you can start them. I would do it in that order, but you're you're right. I mean, if if I have Brian Thomas Jr., um, who you know was a later draft pick, I would I would play him over either of those. And guys. I look, I'm not encouraged about Christian Watson in this season so far. He was three for thirteen in week one. That is not that is not the kind of he did have three touchdown opportunities. He only got one of them, but like when they got around the red zone, the 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 game script, the the, the or not the game script, the uh, the play calling was designed for Watson. That was week one. Yeah, but. and well, that's the plan with Watson. I I think what I said in the off season was if he scores, you're happy. And I don't expect a lot of scores with Malik Willis at quarterback. The Jets are 0-1. They take on the Tennessee Titans. They're also 0-1. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here. Jets on the road, minus 3.5. The over-under is 40. The world was not impressed with Will Levis. Unless you were he a... was his coach. Unless you were oh, a... Chica yeah, man. why don't you share that? Because that was I, awesome. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but it was uh, the head coach of the Titans was asked about the offense, and he said, uh, something along the lines of, if we had punted on every first and ten, I think we win the game. In I other mean, words, your offense cost you the ball game because you turned it over and you were stupid. And uh, that needs to change. <laughs> so bad. So uh, this is a big game, in my opinion. You know, you're at home. Tennessee gets to to play at home. The Jets' defense did not look like they could handle the 49ers in week one, but this is a totally different situation. You play the Jets' D and you want those mistakes, I just want to see what happens with the Calvin Ridley story this this week. To me, this is very important. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that it's important to you. You've got a lot of Calvin Ridley. This is just not a really good matchup for him. Uh, over the course of the entire T of last season, you had the, the wide receiver. They gave up the fewest fantasy points to wide receivers, um, did the Jets. And so... You know, obviously, week one they didn't look quite as tough, but they were playing against the the Forty ers There uh, are some similarities between the offense for the Titans and the offense for the Cardinals, play calling wise. On Sunday, both teams were up seventeen three. Both teams didn't really push the envelope in the second half, and it fell apart for both teams. So Pollard looked good. Are you in on Pollard this week? The line is set at fifty and a half rushing yards. I w I think Pollard is an RB two ish. Type yeah, of a play. yeah, I think he's a, I think he's a good play this week. The, Out on Spears right now. Un, until I, you see it balanced, I think you have to be. Certainly not in any way, shape, or form. Out to the point of like dropping. Oh no, no, no. Um, I, I think you could have it come back to balance. But the matchup is not that bad. The Jets run D. I mean, you saw him get destroyed by Jordan Mason last week. But last year they weren't that great. It, it, it's really the passing work that gets shut down. So Will Levis, like I would, I would be willing, I would be happy to bench Calvin Ridley this week. Um, and if he has a bad game, I know, Andy, you've got a lot riding on it. You would be a little bit more fearful than I would be. The Bears defense, I think by the end of the year, we're going to go back and say, wow, they were so, they're were so they great. And that's who they had to play week one. The Jets, we know their passing defense is great. They've got, you know, they got the sauce. And so um, I, I, I'm happy. I, sh I would want to bench Ridley, and I won't overreact. I'll go trade for him. I think you might look back at the end of the season and we might say that Tennessee's rushing defense is actually pretty darn amazing. Um, so impressed with Sweat on that defensive line. He seems like a superstar. The Bears got nothing going on the ground last week. It was borderline embarrassing debut for, for Swift. All that to say, maybe the efficiency won't be where you want it with Brees. It wasn't last week. It might not be this week, but the passing game work and the hyper focus of Aaron Rodgers on Brees and Garrett Wilson, those two guys are in. Are you chasing what Lazard did against the Titans on the road? So, 
the Lazard like, we, McLaurin and or, or Lazard. Um, I actually might go Lazard. I'm very concerned about McLaurin. It's the it is the same old Cliff Kingsbury garbage that we saw in Arizona of. One guy. This Did is you your see spot. where he was lined up? This, that's exactly what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, 87% you, of the time. You play over here on yeah. the left, and you don't go anywhere else. We have no creativity. It's it's brutal, and rookie quarterback, rushing quarterback, all that stuff. But for Lazard, uh, people are asking, where was he on waiver day? Look, I, maybe if you're in a deeper league, and could be proven, long on, on, proven wrong on Lazard, however – his stat line of six for eighty nine and two is that is the most fraudulent stat line of his first huge touchdown. It was it was the vintage Aaron Rodgers. We got everybody off sides. We got a free mm -hmm. play. I chucked it up and it worked. Would never have thrown that ball if it wasn't a free play. Yeah, and and it worked out. His second touchdown was the backup quarterback at the end of the game when the Jets have said the the white flag was already flying in the wind like. I, I don't think that we get anywhere close to this with Lazard. The, all, the, 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 the Mike bowl, Williams is also working his, his way snaps back, yes. up, and Lazard is not like going to be the starting outside wide receiver in that situation. The bull case for Lazard is full narrative of the reason he's on this team, the reason he got the contract he got, it's because Aaron Rodgers went into the, to the management and said, you're going to sign my friend. So that's well, – if I'm, you want to chase that, I, okay. If if you want to say one more thing in the in the positive for the bull case, it's Legarius Sneed. Uh, Legarius Sneed for this is, week, yeah. For this week is a lockdown corner who, you know, Garrett Wilson. Can I? Can I have a second one? Can a you second have a second one? Almost you, upset. Yeah, I think Tennessee. Absolutely. I think Tennessee wins the ball game. Now I don't have a button, so I can't push it. Well, you already did push it once. Once you push but it once, it you got to push it with up. your mind. Think about <laughs> it real hard right now. Where's the orb? Uh, there it is. Andy's almost upset. I'm giving of the you week. two. I'm giving you two. You're a wild man. Tennessee. I think they're going to play really, really good football this week at home. I do. I, I actually don't. I I don't mind this at all. They're going to run the ball and they're going to take the ball. I, I believe the Titans are going to take the ball out of Will Levis' hands a little bit more so that he doesn't do these boneheaded things. And the Jets are going to. I I could see their offense struggling here. Did you see the comparison between yes. week, week one Zach Wilson and week one Aaron Rodgers? I yeah. did not, but they this were, fuels me. They were identical numbers across the board, except yeah. for last year Zach Wilson got the win and Rodgers got the L. <laughs> not the thing Jets fans want to hear. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. The San Francisco 49ers at 1-0 travel to Minnesota to take on the impressive Minnesota Vikings. The DK Sportsbook line here, San Francisco minus 5. The over-under is 45.5. Both teams look great in week one. Now Minnesota dominated the Giants. San Francisco didn't have Christian McCaffrey and still dominated the Jets. Minnesota upset San Francisco last year on Monday Night Football. And Darnold looked really good last week. Brock yeah, Purdy and the 49ers yeah, looked Jason, like. Jason, would you like to talk about Sam Darnold? Uh, he he looked, he just looked great, man. Now, that being said, he was not playing a very good defense. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's very Tampa Bay, Baker Mayfield questions. Yeah. You got to you gotta prove it to me this week. But um, he, he passed the eyeball test for sure. So, uh, much, much more difficult situation here, especially with. Jordan Addison now going down. So you've got Jefferson, of course. But, you know, were you impressed with everything you saw from Aaron Jones in week one? I was. He looked like he had the same speed, five gains of 10-plus yards. That was the most among uh, running backs in week one. He uh, – it, it it looked like he hadn't lost anything. And so I, it's, it is a timeshare with him and Ty Chandler. It really is. But Aaron Jones is – Right as as of right now, he's a weekly play. Yeah. Eleven opportunities for Ty Chandler in Week One. What was the count for for Aaron Jones? Oh. Eleven for he, uh, has he had sixteen. 16 so that, yeah, that's a timeshare. But got into the end zone. Are you, you know, outside of Jefferson and Aaron Jones though? Are you even? I mean, there's no one else you think about on Minnesota, right? No. So that's no. simple. Even even in a this matchup, even though Darnold looked good, if I'm in a super flex, I'm I'm not playing Darnold. On the other side. Mike started the week. Jordan Mason touched the ball in forty-one percent of the plays for San Francisco. 
we've made we've commented on it already. Yep. Like Mike and I are in the camp where we pl we'd play Jordan Mason. Um, I'm assuming you're on the regardless of Christian McCaffrey. I am, yes. And um, you know that workload that you saw from Mason last week was was awesome. Uh, Christian McCaffrey only saw it in four of sixteen games. And on top of that, I I believe the stat was Jordan Mason faced the most stacked boxes, which means he that, did eight that or more, eight or more defenders in the box. Literally, the defense is is saying, "Go ahead, run the ball on us." And Jordan Mason and the 49ers destroyed. Well, it's perfect for his play style. It's just more more guys for him to hit. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, good. I got eight of them to run over. He um, probably won't tell us when he was told to be the starter this week. <laughs> Debo, is his involvement in this offense only goes up without Christian McCaffrey. That's yeah. a player that you're probably starting anyways, but if there is no CMC, you know you're going to get rushing attempts, probably going to get more passing game involvement, the dump-offs. Um, Brandon Ayuk only had five targets last week. Dropped a touchdown. If you watch Peyton Manning, Manning went off on Ayuk and not signing the contract so you can go yeah. get some reps and catch the football. But Ayuk should get more work in this game. George Kittle, where are you with him? His his receiving yards line is higher than I'd expect. It's at 49 and a half. That feels a little high for me. The Flores defense. He was defense, four for 40 last week. Yeah, four for 40 last week. Um, but the, the Flores defense for Minnesota – they looked great, obviously, Daniel Jones, but they, they looked really good last year. We forget how good their defense was last year. Uh, over the course of the season, fantasy points given up. They were top 10. In fact, they were they were third against quarterbacks, second against tight ends, seventh against uh, running backs. This is, this is a good defense. And so, yeah, not that you're benching George Kittle, but if you're talking about a 49.5-yard line with Ayuk there, that, that feels difficult to achieve. George Pickens or Brandon Ayuk? As I, of right now on Thursday. I, you, I would go Ayuk. Okay. That's a that's a good comp, though. Yeah, you know, tough week for Ayuk in week one. Uh, any other matchups or, or questions? Brock Purdy, um, Minnesota allowed the most completions in the NFL last year. Is Purdy in the in your purview? I would I, – I, I'd stream Baker. Okay. Over Purdy. The Seattle Seahawks travel to New England to take on the New England Patriots. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Seattle minus three and a half. The over-under is 38 and a half. Ew, gross. If you don't have Ken Walker, it's going to get oh, grosser. man. Because I, I believe Zach Charbonnet was the single worst efficiency running back in he the was. football last week. Yep. Had a good uh, fantasy day because he caught a touchdown, but as a as a pure runner, was was not great. There's a lot of matchups apparently that I think are going to go the other direction. I think New England wins the ball game. I'm I, I'm with you on this, so I don't know if that works to your favor because usually when you are <laughs> against something or surprising, I'm I'm totally on the other the, side, and that's when you're right. I think it's the early the early season sit, situation right now. All right, we have um, Ramondre Stevenson, Jason started the week. He's locked into your lineup. Tell me if there's another soul on the Patriots you're even glancing at for fantasy. Absolutely not. Um, that would be bad if you did. Soulless. The, yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm keeping my eye on Jalen Polk, who the the this, the counting statistics at the end of the game were there were nothing. But if watching him play, like watch him on his all twenty two, there was uh, at least one particular play where he had torched his DB, but Jacoby just didn't look at his side of the field. It was an easy touchdown pass. I He is a a very good player who, over the course of the season, might work his way into a starter. Yeah, if from a, a fantasy starter. He's going to start for New like England. Like a event. DFS dart throw. Hunter Henry was he, – he, he basically caught a touchdown, but he was out of bounds last week. We, we'd be viewing him a little bit differently. This is a great matchup for tight ends. Yeah, I was just looking at his targets. He had three in week one. Love to see that go up. Metcalf, you don't bench him just because of a bad week one. It is a new offense, and uh, I, I we talk about it all the time. There's always rose-colored glasses with the new sure. offense. It's always going to be so amazing. Jason's finally going to be utilized the way he's supposed to, and Metcalf's going to be unleashed. He is Jamar Chase in the grub offense. And week one threw some cold water on the high aspirations for both players? Yeah, this was an offense because of all of those things I was looking forward to the most. Now, Denver Broncos... They started last season as just an awful defense, and then they got it together to finish the year. So I think maybe they're a good defense, but 
Here's the problem. So is so are the Patriots. Patriots are a great defense. Now DK's DK line is at fifty three and a half. DK, DK squared. squared. <laughs> Wow, that was. How do you I, not I'm love little, Michael Keaton? I really, love Michael Keaton because I was a little ashamed that we said the same <laughs> stupid thing. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that's that's fair. For we what may I'm not expecting. have a bone zone in this game. Ken yeah. Walker could the miss zone it. will be boneless. Okay, so if he's out though, <laughs> right. we, th this is this is what people are going to need to know. How high would Charbonnet be against a good um, Patriots defense if Walker is out? He'll catch passes. He's running back twenty six. In, my, I was in say, my mind, somewhere in that range. Slightly out of my top 24 is like like Najee against Denver. I'd play ahead. Jerome Ford against Jacksonville. Yeah, I would play ahead. Yeah, yeah. Would you play Zeke against New Orleans or would you play Charbonnet? Zeke. I that think one, I'd go Charbonnet on that, that one's one. very What about close. Swift? I'd play Swift. S Sharby? I'd go Sharby. All right. Um, and then JSN, are we just benching him until yes, further notice? Yes. 100% full bench. Will I am willing to miss the first All right, Jason. explosive game. All right, Jason, reach behind you because it's time, <laughs> oh, it's yeah. time to recap our parlay parte, uh, the three-legged. Uh, okay, you know, I don't like that my. What, you don't like it? What about your wig? I'm just very, it's it's tough. I'm a clown today, okay? Yeah. James Conner, I had him over 51 and a half. He ended it with 50. Ooh, 50? Which makes me, a, under. makes me a clown. I mean, my guy got ejected, guys. <laughs> You have the built-in excuse that would <laughs> never have worked. Jo like Joshua Palmer was, he was on his way. He was just, a, he was a little bit short. <laughs> he did get ejected. So two clowns, one crown. Jason's, uh, Brees this Hall. This thing is shedding all over yeah, me. Yeah. Well, it's not an expensive wig for those <laughs> listening at home. Mike looks, um, I like you. Yeah, like we me. look I ridiculous. Look, I look great. Jason has a crown on because Brees Hall did hit the over of the three and a half. So for week two, here we go. Uh, my favorite line of the week right now, it's uh, Rashad White. Yes. 25-plus receiving yards. He hit the line 8 of 11 games, or 8 of his last 11. You can't run against Detroit, but you can run through the air against them. And in week one, he was the same Rashad White, 6 for 75 through the air. I like Rashad White, 25-plus rushing yards as part of our parlay parte. I love that line. I I. You know, you can always get injured, but that seems uh, that seems good. Uh, I'm going back to the well with the over receptions for a running back from last week. Not Brees this week. I'm going with Ramondre, my start of the week. Um, he saw all the work last week. He had three targets last week, three receptions, so he would have hit it. Last week, Seattle allowed seven receptions to Broncos running backs, checking it down. And over the last three seasons, Ramondre has averaged 3.7 receptions a game. So I... I I like uh, I like him getting to three receptions. Good thing you didn't do the yardage because Julian McLaughlin caught five passes, right for, for a one, yard, one receiving yard total. Uh, I'm getting mad Bob Ross vibes from my wig right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm actually oh. I look pretty good. Yeah, you guys actually do look. I don't mind it. You look pretty good. I don't but now mind they know it. who to trust. <laughs> uh, Mike, go ahead. Derrick Henry, seventy plus rushing yards. It's an alt line, and the story is this: the Ravens are heavy favorites at home, and I'm completely bought into the fact that they should be over the last three seasons in wins. Henry is over this line in 16 of 19 games, averaging almost 110 rushing yards in those games. I know I want to see. I, I know Harbaugh. See, man. I know Harbaugh came out and said we, we didn't bring him in to give him 30 carries. I don't think you have to give him 30 carries in this, and we're, we're taking the I, 70. I do think that they brought him into ice games with a lead, and that's how he ends up accidentally getting to, you know, 25, 30 carries, because it's just like... I would say it's on purpose. <laughs> sure. I don't know yeah, that you right. accidentally get 70 rushing Oh, yards. I don't know. Listen to head coaches at the press conference, and they're like, I don't know how to get this guy more involved. <laughs> yeah. they, they make accidents all the time, Mike. We're all looking for the guy who did this. <laughs> all right, uh... Rashad White, 25-plus. Ramondre, over two-and-a-half receptions. Henry, 70-plus rushing Ooh. yards. That oh, was running backs. That was a uh, fantasy forecast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. DraftKings is dishing out NFL no-sweat touchdown bets for all customers every day, every game day. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code BALLERS. That's the code BALLERS for new customers to get three no-sweat tokens this week. That is going to do it for today's episode of the show. We got more matchups tomorrow. We got the return of Fantasy Faceoff. You asked for it. We listened. We're bringing it back. 
A lot of things to talk about. Enjoy the football tonight, everybody. Goodbye. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Opt in each week to get one no sweat for each game day. No sweat bonus bet issued based on amount of losing qualifying bet. Max reward varies. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms or responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball.